Hello, I'm Lisa. I'm Chris. And this is Three of Skeins, episode 65. Look at us. How's it going, Chris? Okay, I think. I think. Let's hear about that. You're usually not this optimistic, so I'm like, I, all right. I, no, I, you know, it depends on the project. True. So, I'm making the top. Little reminder, it's based on this. It's back. Okay, so it's kind of like a shrug. And if you recall, I was having some trouble shaping the front because I wanted two curved panels overlapping in the front. And so what I was trying to do was just, you know, do the shaping row by row as I went down. And that is darn near impossible. <laughs> I spent a whole day of my life trying to shape the front of this thing and i was i didn't feel any closer to a solution by the end of the day than when i had started and i was just like i that that's not gonna work so i give up for the day and i'm going to bed and it's late and i'm very, very tired and i'm just doing my last little you know stuff i do before i go to bed things and just out of nowhere i think of shawls and I think of, you know, the half circle shawls. And I was like, I know how to do that shaping. I know how to make a shawl that is curved. What if I did that with my top? Instead of trying to work it top down like I was doing, what if I kind of turned it at an angle and made the front pieces as if I was making a portion of a shawl? So basically making a wedge mm -hmm. at a 90 degree angle and then curve the the edge that's between them. And that's what I ended up doing. So I have look at that. A it's not gonna be like this. So my 90 degree angle is at my shoulder. And then this and look at that. Wow, look at that. Wow, and so when I put it on my top, it's going to be kind of hard to hold both of them up. So I'll just show you one. But that's what it's going to look like as the front of my shirt. So mm -hmm. as you can see, my stitches are going in different directions because this I work top down. Mm -hmm. But these I have at an angle. So my stitches are actually going like this. <laughs> but I, I find I don't mind that. I never, and that was something I never thought to do, to turn different pieces of the garment in different directions and actually have stitches moving different ways, but I like that. It's giving me like this kind of cool graphic element to have like verticals in the back, but then have this angle going in the front. Yeah. So this is something I think, if this is an idea, I think I actually want to play around with and like make it deliberate <laughs> at some point in the future. But yeah, I'm getting my, my curved pieces in the front. That looks great. And so now I've started working on my sleeve. My sleeves are just going to be rectangles. And I'm about half, maybe a little more than half done with the first sleeve. And I'm doing the same stitch, three rows of singles and one row of treble. And so it's going to be a nice, like, loose fitting sleeve. It's, it's going to kind of be a little, blou not oversized, but a little blousey because this stitch has quite a bit of drape. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's going to be giving me very similar vibes to my inspiration piece without being like an exact duplication. And I'm happy. Fancy. I'm actually really, really happy because, you know, to go from feeling completely clueless as to how to shape this one piece um, to coming up with what I think is kind of an out of the box solution. And it's not only solved this problem, but it's just kind of giving me some ideas now because I, I've said previously that I'm really thinking about shaping this year. And now I'm, my ideas about it aren't quite as rigid. It doesn't have to happen row by row. There are other ways to, to shape a cat, like <laughs> we've said previously. So I'm, I'm actually really excited and very happy with where I am right now. 
and hopefully I will finish this sleeves or, you know, I can do sleeves practically in my sleep. I wish that was literally true, yeah. but I just wake up and like, oh, there's some sleeves on my chest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the sleeves I was wearing. Right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it shouldn't be much longer now before I finish this. I, I love this yarn. It's marionated um, yarns and the colorway is called Ghostbusters and the base is called Scrumptious HT. Yeah. And it's a fingering weight. And right now, you know, this, I feel like this is a really good way to start off my crochet year. I'm just, I'm happy with my yarn. I'm happy with my design. I'm happy with the way the stitching is going. And I'm, I'm in it. I'm in a good maker place right now that sounds wonderful <laughs> that is absolutely wonderful it's a good start to my year well i on the other hand <laughs> actually i'm pretty i'm pretty much in a good place too i did have some issues with my um hibernate along shawl my aurora cabin I think I talked about this last episode. I had some trouble working this middle section here. And I don't know what was happening. I don't know if I was interpret. I had the correct number of stitches. That's all I can tell you. So what I ended up doing since things had been shifting around was ripping back to about here. And then I knit Almost all of that beginning. back. <laughs> yeah. Knit all of that back, but now my lines are nice and straight. And once I straightened that out, that took care of a lot of my lining up issues because I've been known to throw in an extra stitch if I came up one short. And this is not the place to do that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but once I got the cable section done, even carrying the five yarns wasn't a big deal. He was absolutely right. Do not put it in a bag. Keep them on a tray where they yes, don't move around. The hard current yes, yeah. it was wonderful. Yes. Um, that way I can just pull out the one color because you're only really using one color at a time. You know, every row really. I can pull out this one color that I'm using actively now. Put it over on the other side of me. And this one stays completely free of any tangling. So I got that part done. And I love it even more. Yes, y'all, is a whole fiesta. <laughs> it is. It does feel like a fiesta. And now I am in the first garter stripe section. And this is actually just some very relaxed knitting. I am just striping two colors. I feel like Stephen West must be a very patient man to first come up with this idea and then, you know, write out how he did each step. I don't think I could. You know what he does, though? And I'm really thinking about playing around with this idea, too. He will take a stitch and work it every which way. So this shawl has a hat with this section that matches. Mm -hmm. It has socks. There is um because this a sweater. is a book. Yes. There's a sweater. So, and I notice he's doing that now with more of his patterns. I just watched a video of his today where he had a sweater called the basket weaver or something. And he did the same thing. There's a shawl, there's a hat. So once you've played around with shaping a particular stitch pattern so many different ways, I think it gets really easier for you. But absolutely loving it and once again i am in love with how my colors are playing out i can't wait to see how the next section does and now i'm ready for this middle section again because the other thing this looks very complicated but it's really three rows are pretty much the same thing mm -hmm. so once you've got the first row if your stitch count is right everything's in line Okay. No, no fuss, no muss. So that is my my shawl, my Aurora cabin. Now, um, I see you have 
a little something something over there, Chris. Mm -hmm. Oh, that well, yeah. we can upload this stuff first. Oh, okay. You didn't write your list this time. I didn't. I'm trying she to be more a list of like what we're gonna talk about. I try to I'm trying to be more free flowing, like you're always saying. Is that you want to talk about your makeup? Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> I should. I should. Hey. I am leading a make along right now. It is the Lucy Goosey mm. Make Along. <laughs> Lucy Goosey Make Along 2023. What we're making is sweaters. Um I'm making the weekender. <laughs> you did not set up properly. It was hey, it wasn't downstairs or across the room. Okay. But you can make any sweater you like. I'm going to suggest that the only thing for me is I'm doing comfort sweaters for the first couple of projects I do this year. So I wanted to make a couple of sweaters to replace some ratty old sweatshirts I wear a lot. So I decided to go with Andrea Mallory's Weekender for the first one. And I've got the first hem done. This is the ribbing for the back of the Weekender. I'm doing it in Barocco Ultra Wool Worsted, so it is a washable wool. Beautiful stuff. Now the, the sweater is done in the round and flat, depending on what section you're working on. Yeah, so I start with this back section. I'm gonna do a front ribbing and then I'm gonna join the two and is the, the, the ribbing split? Yes, okay. there's a split hem detail, and that's how you accomplish it. So I am actually in the cast on for the second one. You do something that's known as the Italian cast on. I forget what they call it, the more modern name for it. Anyway, I, I learned it first as the Italian cast on. It is kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> it is. But I think it's so worth the effort because what you get is your cast on looks like it came out of nowhere. See that? And I really like that look. That's going to be a nice detail and all the edges are kind of done that way. So we're doing the Italian cast on, the Italian cast off, all of that. So here's what you want to do when you're doing that Italian cast on. You're going to cast on each stitch in pairs. So you're going to cast on a knit and a pearl and that's how you're going to you're going to count, that's how you're going to count them. That way you keep track of where you are. It is going to spin like a top around your needle because it's not a stable cast on. If you've ever done the backwards loop cast on, you know how that stretches and moves and all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a stable cast on. But if that gives you too much trouble, you can try um, Very Pink Knits did an older version of this cast on, she did a video. I'll include a link to that in the description bar where you start with a provisional cast on and then you rip out the part you don't need. So you can do it that way too and it won't be as fiddly as doing the Italian cast on. So that's that's the only thing, but the rest of it is just lots and lots of stockinette and then some, some ribbing at the shoulders. It's gonna be awesome. But for this new law, you can make whatever sweater you want. I'm suggesting you do a drop shoulder because I'll be talking about working drop shoulders and fitting drop shoulders and have fun with it. I don't have an end date in mind. So whenever you end it, post it on Instagram. We'll celebrate with you. It'll be fun. Hashtag Lucy Goosey Cal 2023. Yes. Hashtag Lucy Goosey Cal 2023. I spell Lucy Goosey with the E's. No. Yes. You know what? I will. Put... Otherwise, I didn't think the goose would be goose. Yeah, it, no, it, it wouldn't be. Yeah, it would exactly. be very strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no desire in it. <laughs> I absolutely no desire. First of all, there's just too many cast ons. Oh my God. I, mm, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You don't need to do a million different cast ons. It sounds but, like you need at least a few. But it is good. It many. is good to know how to do it. You know, 
maybe three. I think you could get through an entire knitting career with three. I don't believe that. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> so I, you know, I I like to be faithful to my lips. Yes. So I, I haven't started my sweater yet, but I have swatched it. Oh, but tell them why you're doing a sweater, Chris. I already told them. Lisa's doing her sweater, and then mom decided she's going to make the same sweater. Now they want to be the only one without this particular sweater. <laughs> Believe I don't it want to be all people. left out. So I'm making one too. So I've swatched it in Broco Chai, which is a linen and silk. And you know what? Our reds are very different. So I think that's actually just fine. Yeah. But so I have that, you know, center detail. Not make it crooked. Yes, yeah, so I have the center detail like the original. I'm just doing um, a post stitch uh, mm -hmm. cable, but just kind of one little cable down the middle. Now, I was going to do my ribbing also with post stitches, and it's going to be, you know, blocks of five, so five post stitches and then five single crochet. But I think I'm, I looked at the picture again, and so now I'm going to take it down to just two and make my ribbing a little smaller. Mm -hmm. But I'm also probably, we'll see, I'm still deciding, going to two-tone it. So I have this kind of like charcoal gray, dusty black color. Oh. And so what I would like to do is do the ribbing in this color, but also do that center detail in this color. So I'll be working in Tarja just to have this stripe going down the middle be in the black and i think that'll just be a fun detail yeah um and i think when i do that i'm not going to like try to stay attached to a whole ball i'm just going to cut the length mm -hmm. and work it until that length runs out and then just attach a new one um because to work one stitch in the middle of the row i don't think i need to be attached to the second ball all the not time all. so yeah so mine's going to have just a, a dash of intarsia <laughs> And it's gonna have a, a different a contrast ribbing. And I think it this is gonna be really simple. I'm, the body is basically just going to be single crochet. Um and DK weight. I don't work at these bigger weights very often. So I know. I'm actually kind of looking forward to this. Um the ball band recommended a 4.5 millimeter hook, so that's what I use for my swatch. And I think that works for me. I don't mm -hmm. think I need to go any bigger. Um so yeah, I'm gonna make a little crochet version. That's awesome. When I finish this though, because <laughs> I am a mono maker. I like to work on well, one thing I'm going to work on just these two projects. And that <laughs> just is all. these two. <laughs> that is all. Because I find that if I let things get out of hand, it just, it gets out of okay, hand. So mark these words. I'm just going to work on these two projects, yes. she says. Yes, that's it. Just these two projects. And I like that they're different enough that, you know, like one, I'm just going to be using one one ball of yarn, mm -hmm. no matter what's happening. One's a worsted, one's a fingering. So I have something for my moves. Okay. <laughs> that means not swatching anything else either, though, right? Really? <laughs> Isn't swatching something working on something? I suppose. I, I can swatch into thinking. So, yeah, I made my swatch, but now my swatch is going to sit and I'm going to not swatch anything else and I'm going to finish my project. No, no, That no. way I can, you know, finish the project. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Oh, let me share what I'm wearing. I, today I'm wearing my painting honeycomb shawl. I finally got the day right. This is also a Stephen West shawl. But it was just a thing for the coldest day we've had since Christmas. And it gets a little chilly up here. And I love it. This is in uh, Universal Colorers and Barocco Ultra Wool DK. Okay, so now you want to try your line again? Oh, I see you have something over there. Oh, I see you have something <laughs> over there, Chris. <laughs> she jumped the gun a little bit. Because I was curious. She doesn't tell me sometimes. No, uh, we talked about... Look, okay. 
I said, oh, do you want to talk about some vintage crochet patterns in this episode? Because Oh, okay, got it. You know, I want people to have the illusion that we have it together and we know what we're doing. Oh. I don't want like all of this stuff oh. <laughs> in front of house, but here we are. I have this vintage book that I found on eBay. And I was showing it to her and mom and she seemed very excited about it. So I was like, oh, do you want to talk about that in the video? And because I, I also have like a whole stack of vintage patterns. So I was like, oh, let's talk about some vintage See, patterns. I did not know about that. Anyway, <laughs> show them the book. Please. I'm going to show them the book. <laughs> ah, there it chaos. Is. Chaos. This is such a little dab of chaos. So Crystal secretly had this book in her stash. Secretly. Well, nobody else knew about it. And she came down the other day and she tossed it to me and mom. She was like, hey, you guys want this? Yeah, it's just called Knitting and Crochet Book. Yeah, it's just called Knitting and Crochet Book. It was published, I guess, seen something. yeah, it's actually 1903. Oh, 1903. And it's from John Patton and Son. I believe that's the same Patton's yarn that we all know and love. And I was enchanted. Oh, you have notes since oh wow. Yeah. She's got page flags and different colors. Do the different colors mean things? Not really. Okay. It's just so I can see things as well. You know, her vision is much better than mine. And it's she not. doesn't notice all the things I do <laughs> to make sure I can actually see things. <laughs> but I was really curious about this. And I was looking through it and mom came by. She's like, what's that? <laughs> So we were going through it, That's cute. and what I liked was, I thought it was so interesting that I don't know where this East Coast, West Coast split between knitting and crochet came from, because when you have old books, it's usually both knitting and crochet. There's some- What is East Coast, West Coast? People in California? Knitting? No, you know, like like the rap feud. What, what feud is there? Between knitters and crocheters. Everything oh, is so split oh, and separate nowadays. You're knitting. I thought you meant two different- Crews no, of knitters. I no. was like, there's knit beef? <laughs> there's no, <laughs> no the, okay. Well, there's always a little knit beef, but not. <laughs> 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 but there's even another art called netting that I've really only heard of. There's a couple of netting patterns in here. But this is literally, if you can only have one book, it's got pretty much everything for men, women, children. You have one book in 1903. This is not the one book I would have today. <laughs> yeah, this is not the one book I would have today. But it gave me some ideas. Like, one of the things that was going on in here was there's a whole page that says many of these articles are great for making for soldiers who are away. Oh. And I was like, it's 1903. What wars are going on in 1903? Always somewhere. So, you know, I looked it up, right? Apparently, I usually think in terms of World War War One, World War Two. This is the period of European colonization. So England was at war in Borneo, Somaliland, China, West Africa, East Africa, and Venezuela. So there was a lot of knitting going on for English soldiers. Um, so aside from all of that, there were things that I didn't know what it was that they were talking about. Oh, that's, nice. that's a little cape, yeah. I like that. It's really cute. There was Maybe something. We the yes. <laughs> that was Let's see, it's got fur trim. Yes. And that's just, you know, I have this faux fur and I'm always looking for different ways to use it. And that's pretty freaking cool. Oh, yeah. They had a pattern for something called a pilch. If you know what a pilch is, put it in the comments, okay? I didn't know what a pilch was. I had to look it up. So a pilch is essentially a diaper cover that you could put over the baby's diaper. And it would be you know warm what? and absorbent. I That's feel like really that cute underwear, be, right? I could scale that up as a pair of shorts. That's yes. kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> I see that the things are cute, but they don't, I mean, there ain't nothing like a schematic in here. No, there are no schematics. For a few things, there are no pictures. And that was because there was a, one or two styles that was, you know, pretty much how it was done. So you didn't need a picture of an undershirt. Who didn't need a picture? Because they knew what it looked like. Okay. So there were instructions. But one of my favorite instructions, and the way things are written, 
are hilarious. Where is it? I think this might be it here. There is a gentleman's ah, the gentleman's lounge coat. Listen to this. This is a most comfortable coat, but it should be made up for a tailor as there are too many difficulties, difficult details for any amateur to undertake. How are you going to that's the gentleman's like lounge. that? But part of the thing was most people why is it in the book? But you supposed people, to take the book to your tailor? Yes, had a tailor and or a dressmaker that they because this is before they were already off the rack, ready made clothes. Yes, and I understand that, but so if you I'm had providing instruction, your tailor or your dressmaker, you just take this to them and say, "Make me one of these, please." I would not have wanted to be a tailor then. <laughs> sounds horrible to have people coming in with stuff all the time. Like, make this. Mm -mm, no, <laughs> no, no. But, that, and you know, they say it's too difficult because if you notice, some of the parts are sewn. Like, look at the collar. The collar looks like it's made of satin and silk. Those cuffs that are turned back cuffs with welting. There's no instructions for doing that in this pattern. They expect that your tailor will handle that part. Okay. You see the frog closures? Your tailor handles all of that. Okay. <laughs> but it's just such a different way. Take this book to someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> and I'm like, then why did I buy this book? <laughs> There's just a different way. Um, but we were talking about that too, where we have the expectation now that the pattern that you bought tells you everything that you need to know. But some people have that expectation. When when I was reading through these patterns, it was very clear what they expected you to know. And when they felt that it was things but you would know. But that was also a time when people learned these skills, like. In your home, this is like they were this passed you, on. This is how you get at clothes, some yeah. point. People stop passing on these skills, right? Right. But uh, so then you could assume those things, but child, now, these days, listen to this. This is age old. This is more than one hundred year old advice. For knitting these garments, it is essential that you knit your specimen piece, i.e., a swatch. It must tally with the inches given here, or you will not have a successful shape. <laughs> Knit seven stitches to the inch in width without stretching, 14 rows in height, a plain pearl row alternating, or seven ridges of all plain knitting. And that's that's all you got for sizing. Mm. So Good luck with that. You measure yourself, and you make it to your size. <laughs> but just reading the... Through just, I was lightly reading through some of the instructions and whatnot. These are not line by line patterns exactly. They do have up in front some basic information about knitting, mm -hmm. you know. But there was a good bit of stuff they expected you to know. I was looking at one of the patterns and for sure. uh, it said, Oh, for this jersey, make a lining and line it with some linen. <laughs> So I am excited about several of the patterns in here. Don't ask me when I would actually make them, but yeah. I think I am going to make one or two things out of here. Yeah, I have to go through this book again. It's been I know. A while since I looked at it, I know. I'm seeing like some intriguing stuff, right? right? Like, what is happening? What is? Is that like some sort of fit? It's a what? crossover shawl. And look at that. that oh. Okay, let me show you what has stopped Crystal in her tracks. This this type of shawl over here, I'm pointing to the wrong thing. They used to call this a, a sun tag, you know, the, the crossover shawl. And this ruffled extravaganza over here. And that's knitted? Or is some of that sewn? Uh, I imagine there's several things going on. Yeah. I don't like that picture. That's a little scary. It's giving me ghost vibes. <laughs> <laughs> the way standing up all by itself, yeah. right? yeah. <laughs> to say. But I think some of these old books are very interesting and just the wide breadth of things people make. Because we, now we make a limited number of things, I feel. And okay, this these are the ones that offended me the most. What do you guys think these are? Child reigns. People have oh. been putting their kids on leash <laughs> for a long time. And she made it cute by knitting in you can mention the child's name. Beauty. Yeah. And you know, 
that is not as charming as the uh, ones that look like the little stuffed animal backpack now. And then, yeah, because those you don't notice at first that mom or dad is holding a leash. <laughs> but here's the worst part: if you read through the pattern, it tells you how to make a double one, so you could hook one kid to the other one and just have reins on both. Uh, they on the get away. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. The world is a dangerous place. You gotta try to keep the little safe, okay? But I found this really interesting. And there are things in here that would be actually mostly the underwear. Some of the underwear is outerwear now. And I would make some of the underwear that I saw. I that pilch is giving me some ideas. I know it is, because the pilch gave me ideas too. <laughs> but this was this one, and it's called. Knitting and crochet book. Where did you get this? This is the third edition, eBay. by the way. eBay. Ah. So somebody has this on eBay. Take a look for it. It's fascinating. Oh, yeah. Thought I had the wrong book for a second. Okay. So I have a, just a couple of things. This one, I probably 70s. I'm thinking I can't find a copyright. I have no idea when this is from. But it's called Let's Crochet. And as you can see, I went through it and um, marked some pages of interest. But I wanted to show this dress. Because dress. I think I saw something like this, a version of this in a crochet magazine several years ago. Yeah. So somebody must have found this and got inspired by it. But you can't really tell, but it's actually, it's made, it's made of squares, which is a crazy easy way to do this. Wow. So oh you my just God. work on the bias and make each of these squares and then you stitch them together. Crystal. And I'm like, that's freaking brilliant. That is brilliant. And I'm in love with this. I, I feel like I got to make me a version of this. That is so cute. It's way 70s though. <laughs> and then the... That tiger stripe sweater, I don't really have anything to say about that. <laughs> yeah. But it's a moment. It is. But just the idea of making that sweater in that way mm -hmm. is brilliant. And then I have this book of crochet coats. I have to say, this one on the cover is a little wild. But I like the ideas. So look at that. I mean, first of all, that's just some nicely done work. Yeah. But it's it's a little chaotic for me, but I love I love this color work. This is like not where I am in my color work at all right now. This is what it looks like the, the front of that jacket. That's kind of fly though. Right? Yeah. And so they're all long because I like that cream one right there. Yeah, there's no color pictures inside. But the cream one, it's just different um textured stitch patterns and then on the front you can see a little bit of the back so it's got those bobbles on it mm -hmm. i like these and i'm trying to think right now like do i currently have enough yarn in any one color to make something like this length i mean this comes down to like mid cap this is like a full on coat yeah. because i have been thinking i want to make a crochet coat there was this crochet coat by, I think his name is Drew Borsky. He goes by the crochet dude um, that I absolutely fell in love with. And the first time I saw it, I was like, mom, make that coat for me. Because <laughs> at the time I wasn't crocheting garments, but it, it became like a, a goal for me to make that coat. Although now I feel like I'm a little past it. But I still want, I want to make a coat. And this is, this is just inspo. This is just inspo. But I have a number of I have a number of little vintage books. Maybe I, I have to do some sort of flip through or something. Um, That'd be awesome. Because I it, they're just a great place to go for ideas. And I feel like sometimes I feel like crochet design right now is a little bit stuck. And I really like seeing what people used to do with crochet because it just doesn't feel as limited. I feel like people have this one view of crochet because of what they see right now. Right. But crochet used to be a way to just make clothes, just like knitting. It, it was not this either or thing. It was just one of the ways that people made clothes. They crocheted, they knitted, they sewed. 
Sometimes all in one project. <sighs> That's intimidating. <laughs> but I feel like vintage is just a great place to find like real clothing clothing. So where would you look if you wanted to get something like that? So a lot of what I have, I found on eBay in lots. Okay. So people will just sell you like, uh, sometimes people literally will find it in like a, a relative's home and just want to get rid of the whole thing. Um, and some people actually like seek these out to, to sell. But um, e I, I had to actually stop going on eBay because it was too tempting. But e eBay is a good place to look for them. There might be some on Etsy as well. But where I've gotten most of my um, vintage is from, from eBay. Let, let me show you. Ooh. But wait, there's more. <gasps> Oh, <laughs> uh, this is my stack. It's the mother load. So these are also some more books from the 80s. And then I have a bunch of these little tiny books. I love those little suits. I love the suits too. I. That's another thing that is on my long-term to-do list. Because you know what they make me think of? Barbie. Yes, I know. I know. I know. I was a Barbie girl. I am a Barbie girl, Dagnum. I just don't have any Barbies anymore. <laughs> when my niece was like teaching us about aesthetics, because I had no idea that people were like choosing core aesthetics, I actually had to look that up. I was like, well, what are these different aesthetics? I found out that I was Barbie core. So then I have all these little ones that have um, everything clothing, housewares. Wow. Is that? That's what I was looking real, Mr. Rogers. That, that looks is like so a funny. Mr. Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> and I have some more of these little. And see, I have gone through them to some extent, and I picked out things that I like. Like I like this sweater on the back. That's really cute. Look at oh, this yeah. right here. Ooh la la! What? And I have, I have a whole bunch here that is just doilies. Oh, look at what they did. They made it look like flowers. That's what it's called doily bouquet. Mm. And I think doilies are just a great place to go to find stitch patterns. Yes. Beautiful lacy stitch patterns. So I'm I'm a big fan of collecting doily patterns. Holy cow, look at this bad boy. Wow. I could not put that on a table where someone might touch it. Might spill their tea on it. What? <laughs> this one on the back. It would be a bad day. Mm -mm. Okay, why back in the day this magazine cost 20 cents? Wait, don't even talk to me about the prices. Don't even talk to me about the prices. These are just beautiful edgings. Edgings for handkerchiefs. I can't imagine doing that much work. But look at that. Oh, that is nice. But that's before there was Kleenex. I've had to, I should have dragged these out a while ago because mm -hmm. I haven't looked at them in a minute. But look at, look how they matched the two different color threads on the pink and black yes. to the pink and black um, handkerchief. Yes. That wow. is really nice. So, yeah, I have a, a few more, but. Can you imagine edging a sewn blouse like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I have a lot of doily patterns. Um, this one is just like a simple filet crochet, but it's really cute because they did oh, kind of like a checkerboard, but with two different um, two different sizings, and just playing off the the two different uh, gauges. It seems to be it. It looks like it's two very different patterns, but you're still really just doing squares. Mm -hmm. I like that. This is oh, oh, inspiration. That just is struck. cute. Inspiration just struck. Uh oh. Look at that. Look at that. Day. That is gorgeous. Hmm. This I can't like. I can't even believe that's crochet. This looks like a sewn garment. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, I need to spend some more time, apparently, <laughs> with my my vintage patterns because 
See, like these are like super basic, but they're really just well done. Yeah. And so they just look like really beautiful garments. And that that's my aesthetic. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to make because I feel there's like a lot of like, you know, stunt stitching out there. And that's not my thing. I, I'm happy to do really basic shapes and basic styles, but just I want them to be well done. I want them to look very contemporary and, and fit to, great. Yes. Yeah. And fit into my wardrobe. And this is just mad wearable. Oh, absolutely. So that is the inspiration that I take from vintage that this was a time when people wore what they made. So they only made things that they wanted to wear. Look at this sweater. Tell me that's not stunning. Can you see that in silk? This oh. is absolutely beautiful. First of all, the drape they got on it is like, holy cow. But th this, this is literally what I want to do. This is, this is me as a crocheter, I hope, one day. <laughs> I think you're already there. But yeah. Vintage. So if this sends you down a rabbit hole, blame sorry, Crystal. Not sorry. Because she sent me down the rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, this is like so not funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but look, look at the finishing. Because how people cool. were planning to really wear these things. Look at how this is finished. It's it's got a silk lining. Must and be a soul. Nice. Must be nice. But yeah, so this is just kind of like where my head is at these days. I'm not the funny I'm not really I don't know. I'm not really looking at current patterns. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at clothes, like already made clothing and I don't know, like an invented stuff. That's where I'm getting my inspiration from right now. I don't know if that'll change in the future, but that's where I am right now. Because this, for me, this is like how I'm going to make my wardrobe. Always remember that my goal is the me made wardrobe. All me made all the time. <laughs> because you know what? I do get Except extra for socks and buying my socks. <laughs> <laughs> I do get extra happy when I'm wearing something I've made. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I will put on one of my handmaids and wear it around the house. She does. Don't let it get cold. She does. So. That, that's what's going on it, it, in the, the Three of Skeins household at the moment. <laughs> Mom is working on her Tunisian version. Well, Mom's making hats. She's she's She wants to make charity hats. And so she's been just working at her own patterns for making different kinds of hats. And she's very happy with how her hats are going at the moment. Oh, yeah. And then she's going to do a Tunisian version of the Andrew Mary sweater. So that's what's up with mom. Yeah. So I think that's, that's about it for this week. I think so. If you guys are inspired by vintage patterns, let us know where you're getting yours. Yeah. I was about to say, if you have a source, yeah. <laughs> do share. <laughs> just put it down in the comments. <laughs> We won't glom them all up. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for joining us this week. Oh, we didn't have any content last week. I was direly sick. Fortunately, I did not test positive for COVID, but I was still sick and I had no voice. Her allergies are outrageous. Really, they're disrespectful is what they are. Thank you. I feel that way too. <laughs> anyway, see you next time. Have a great week, everybody. Stay stitching. <laughs>